Introduction I recently came across an email inviting people to my 30th birthday party. I wasn't taken aback by the location, a karaoke studio in Manhattan's Koreatown, or the guest list, practically everyone I'd ever met, but I was shocked by the start time, 10 p.m. I tweeted about it, writing, Truly, was I ever so young? The responses surprised me. My friend Caroline wrote, My 30th birthday started at 5 p.m., and it was on a Monday, and my invitation clearly stated, I am leaving the bar and going home at 7 p.m. Another woman said hers started at noon. Yet another, who has a baby almost exactly my son's age, but is 10 years younger than me, said, I was literally never that young. And then it hit me. 30 was old to have a late birthday party. But how had everyone else gotten these parties out of their systems when they were 24, if they'd ever had them at all? Meanwhile, on the night I turned 30, I was blissfully shrieking into a microphone, drunk on cheap beer and two strong vodka sodas in plastic cups. I wasn't engaged or married or pregnant. I lived in a small basement apartment. I had a job, but less than a year before, I'd been an intern. At the time, not having achieved any of the milestones I associated with being an adult didn't bother me. But as my early 30s turned into my mid-30s and then my late 30s, I started to feel like I had been left behind, that everyone else's lives had moved on and progressed, And I was still the female Peter Pan singing a slightly off-key version of Mariah Carey's We Belong Together. Deceptively tough karaoke song, still brings down the house every time. For men, there's just not as much pressure to do things on a timeline. The image of the man who takes an especially long time to find himself is one that has long been enshrined, even venerated, in our collective cultural consciousness. But most women aren't afforded the luxury of doing things on their own time. The paradox of femininity is that we're always either too young and inexperienced or too old and washed up. As my friend Maris Kreisman once put it on Twitter, you're told you're young until you turn 35. By the time you're 40, you're over the hill. I had no idea at the time that I would only have five years to be the age when I was just a person. Statistics do, in fact, point to the late 30s as being this turning point, where suddenly more of your friends will be married, own homes, and have kids. So for those of us who don't hit that trifecta, what then? What if we want those things, but they just haven't happened for us, for whatever reason? Or if we don't want those things, but we feel like we should? I've wrestled with all these questions. I got married at 38, had my first kid at 41, and undoubtedly will be renting in the very overpriced city of Los Angeles until the end of time. I also feel like I very much did not have my shit figured out at 30 or 40. Even now, at 44, I'm still figuring it out, whatever it is. Long after my 30th birthday party, I realized that I always had been, and probably always would be, late to dating, to sex, to marriage, to motherhood, to finding the kind of work I truly like to do, to being comfortable in my own skin. And so I wanted to write this book as a gentle corrective to the idea that we're supposed to do things on a schedule. I'm only just becoming the person I was meant to be, and that took a lot of self-reflection and more than a little reckoning with the person I've always been. And to be clear, that person is still a work in progress. But this book is not just about coming to terms with being a late bloomer. It's also about how I came to deeply appreciate it. Because sometimes coming of age happens on our own time. And that's okay.